Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Today I get to show you the successor to a very popular unified cloud gateway that is perfect for home users. This cloud gateway has integrated Wi-Fi 7 with throughput of up to 5.7 gigabit per second. It supports Unify Network, Unify Protect, Unify Access, Talk and Connect. Meet the all new Unify UDR7. The UDR7 will look very familiar to you, but has some serious upgrades. If you're looking to buy the UDR7, I do have an affiliate link in the description below. Now let's go take a closer look at the hardware. And this is the UDR7 that has the same form factor as the original UDR. We have the LCM on the front, and we also have this LED around the top that will be blue once it's been configured. The biggest changes happen on the back. The first thing you'll notice is this SFP Plus connection for our WAN, which will give us up to 10 gigabit per second. We also have another WAN, which is RJ45, that will do 2.5. The other three ports are 2.5 gigabit per second LAN, and we also have a PoE port. We also have the micro SD on the bottom, and this would be for storage for our Unify Protect. If you're going to be using Protect, I would use a Western Digital Purple as that's made for storage, and we have our power input. On the bottom, we have our factory reset button, which is just this push button, which I really like, instead of having to do a pinhole. The UDR7 can manage up to 30 plus unified devices, as well as having 300 plus connected devices to the Wi-Fi. We do have that dual WAN and for failover or load balancing, and the IDS and IPS throughput is 2.3 gigabit per second. For the Wi-Fi on our 6 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, and 2.4, we have 2x2 two two multi-user MIMO. To get this set up, we need to plug in a connection to our WAN. I have a 3 gigabit connection here, so I'm just going to plug into the 2.5 RJ45. We'll launch the Unify Network application from my phone and get the initial setup done. I've now launched the Unify Network application, and we can see that a new device has been found, and that's the Dream Router 7. We're going to press Setup. And this is just as easy as setting up any of the other cloud gateways. So I'm going to press set up. All right, it's now connected and we need to name our device. I'm just going to call this Mac Telecom UDR7. Right out the gate, you can see that it's asking us to create a Wi-Fi network. They call it Unify. That's the SSID. I'm going to leave it at Unify and then I'll call it Wi-Fi 7. And this will be our test network. And we're only going to have this on the 6 gigahertz. I'm going to put a password of test1234. Now, if you're setting up the UDR7 from another Ubiquiti console, we could restore it from a backup. I'm not going to be doing that. It's going to be a fresh install, and I'm going to press next. Now, this is our current speed that it's showing. I should be getting about 2.5 gigabits per second, so we'll end up testing that a little bit later on. So the next thing, we'll get into the dashboard from my computer. And this is the dashboard to the UDR7. Mine may look a little bit different than yours because I'm running a different network version that's not out currently, but it is basically the same as before. We have all our network health and we have our Wi-Fi. We could see that we have my Mac Telecom UDR7, the WAN IP, and then we have our gateway IP, as well as the internet usage. Let's go ahead and go out to speedtest.net to see if we're getting about the 2.5 gigabit per second. If we go and look at the UDR7 on this port right here, that is where my computer is connected to at 2.5. So we'll go to speed test. Now we're on speed test. Let's press go and see the results that we get. Okay. And the speeds that I was getting was 2,367 down and 2,371 up. So that is pretty close to that 2.5 gig capacity that we have. Now let's go back over to the UDR7. If we look at the UDR7 under our Wi-Fi on our 2.4, we're always going to leave that at 20 megahertz. But if you want your Wi-Fi to go a little bit faster on the 5 gigahertz, we'll bump that up to 80. And then on the 6 gigahertz, I'm just going to bump that up to 160 megahertz. The reason only 160 megahertz instead of 320 is I have the iPhone 16 and that only does 160. So how we go about doing that, we're going to click over on the left hand side and click on radios. From radios, we're going to click again in the middle on the radios and we're going to select all three of the bands. Now in the top left hand corner, we could hit this checkbox and it's going to bring up the radio settings. We're not going to touch the 2.4. On the 5 gigahertz, we're going to put it at 80. If you do have a lot of neighbors or a lot of scans around you, other devices, you might want to leave this at 40. For me personally, I don't care about how fast it goes as long as it's stable. And then on our 6 gigahertz, I'm going to put this at 160 and then apply the changes. 
Now at the beginning, I said that I was gonna only have the six gigahertz running, but I don't think we're gonna do that. I'm gonna go down to the settings wheel and if I click on my Wi-Fi, I now have something that I'm gonna enable and that is multi-link operation. I'm gonna hit the checkbox. Once we enable this, it will have WPA3 in force. So if you do have older devices, they may not be able to connect. So it is wise to create a separate network that is running multi-link operations for the newer devices that you have. I did a test with the Wi-Fi settings that we have using the Wi-Fi Man application on my iPhone 16. You can see that I was getting 1,279 megabits per second down and 745 megabits per second up. And this is on the six gigahertz band and we're doing it at 160 megahertz. What I'm gonna try, I do have a NAS that is connected to the UDR. We're gonna do open speed test as well as some iPerf test as the internet isn't always as stable. But what we need to do, because I'm gonna be connecting my NAS at 10 gigabit, we need to switch that SFP plus port. So how we go about doing that, we're gonna click on our settings wheel. From here, we're gonna go over to internet. Under the internet, you can see that there's something plugged into my WAN too, but that is my NAS at 10 gig. So we're gonna click on it and we're gonna assign WAN2 to port one. This is a really nice feature where we could select whichever port we want to be our secondary failover WAN. Once we do that, the SFP plus port should be turned into a LAN port and we should be able to reach my NAS to be able to do the open speed test in iPerf. Now with the NAS connected at 10 gig, we're gonna try an iPerf test. We're going through the Wi-Fi from my iPhone and it's gonna be 30 seconds with five streams. So let's press start. All right, and the average was 1,460 megabits per second. Let's try the same thing, but for our upload. And the average upload was 1,040 megabits per second, which I think is relatively good. Now we're gonna do an open speed test. I have open speed test brought up. We're gonna press start and see the results that we get. And we're getting 1,520 down and 1,377 up, which I think is really impressive. Wi-Fi testing is really tricky to do and everybody's results are gonna be a little bit different. I am sitting maybe about five feet away from the UDR7 and that's the results I was getting. I was running this in my house for over a month though and it was the only AP in the house down in my basement and I did get coverage throughout my house and it's about 2,100 square feet. Now let's take a look at what else the UDR7 can do. Now that we've seen the performance of our Wi-Fi 7 on our UDR, let's see what else it could do. We could create multiple different VLANs and Wi-Fi networks and going down over to security, we also have the zone based firewall, which I'm gonna click to upgrade now. If you haven't seen the zone based firewall, I will leave my video down in the description below. But currently we're just running one network for this video, so we won't need to do anything with this. But if we click over on our protection, the UDR, if you want to buy the optional cyber secure by proof point, you can by clicking to activate. We could also set up simple app blocking. So create new, we could give it a name and then we could select the device or network we want it to apply to as well as the applications or the categories. We have all the standard stuff as like on any other Unify gateway. So we have ad blocking, region blocking, we have encrypted DNS, we have our honeypots, and then we have identification as well as our intrusion prevention. So I'm gonna click and turn that on. By default, it goes to notify, but I always want it at notify and block. We could tell that we have less options than what we would with something like the UDM Pro Max or the UDM Pro. All of the options are currently turned on and we have 13 different categories that we could specify. Going over to our control plane, you could see all of the applications that this could run. Network is on by default and you cannot turn that off, but we have protect, access, talk, connect, and interspace. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna install Unify Protect as I have an AI Pro plugged into port one and port one is the PoE port on our UDR7. Hopping over to Unify Protect, it's the exact same as any other Protect application. We could see the AI Pro and it's ready to be adopted into the application. Now pop-up comes up and it's introducing us to smart detections and we wanna have smart detections on, of course. And looking under our AI Pro, if we go over to the recording settings, it looks like we could only do events only or motion events. We can't do continuous. If we hover over continuous, it says, please insert a compatible SD card. But going down to our settings wheel and then looking at our storage, we're gonna be able to see that we have a 64 gigabit SD card in here that comes preloaded. 
Ubiquiti gives you the Western Digital Purple 64 gig. This is the same as what the UDR was. It didn't do continuous recording. It was just on events only. For camera limits within the UDR7, we could have five HD cameras, two 2K cameras, or one 4K camera. Since the AI Pro is a 4K camera, this is all I would be able to have on it. If you need to expand how many cameras you have, you would have to also buy something like the UNVR. And that's going to be my video on the Unify UDR7, and I do think it's a great upgrade from the normal UDR. Like I said, I was using this about a month, and it was running really well within my network. Now, who is the UDR for? Well, I think this would be great for a home network. Within my home network, we only have about 40 clients running, and I have 11 unified devices running. So that would be the perfect fit for it. If you do need higher than 2.3 gigabit per second speed with the IDS and IPS turned on, you're gonna have to go with another cloud gateway. The performance of the Wi-Fi for me has been really good. I don't have a ton of IoT devices, but they were all connecting seamlessly. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of the UDR7. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.